Hi, Darla from stampingunderdoctorsorders.blogspot.ca with you today. And somebody had asked on one of the Silhouette Facebook groups about tracing a picture of a printing cut that has some spaces in the middle that need to be cut out as well. And let me show you what I mean. Um, this is the image she wanted to trace. I'm just going to drag that over. You could also bring that in by going to File, Merge, and finding your file and bringing it in. But you can just drag and drop it onto the screen as well. So I just want to show you that if I were to just cut this right now, it's nothing but a picture. So if I come into the cut style window by clicking on the scissors up here and come over here, it, uh, oops, it doesn't actually do anything. Sometimes if you get it, you can, you cut the edge, it literally cuts it out like it's a square picture or it doesn't really matter what you choose, it's only going to do that outer square. So, that's not what we want. We want to be able to cut out all the way around here as well as this inner piece here. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to come over to my trace window. I'm going to select trace area. I'm going to click and drag until I have a blue box that goes over my picture. And I'm going to uncheck my high pass filter. And I actually want my scale all the way down for this one. I've already played with this so I actually know kind of what settings I need. Um, and let me just show you, if I, if I were to do what it first brought up, which I think was around 40-ish, um, what is yellow is what would cut as one piece. So that's actually what your paper would look like. So you wouldn't get any of the orange pieces. They would just fall out. They would be stuck to your mat. Or vice versa, you'd have this orange piece, but when you take that away, all the what's yellow would be on your mat still. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for all of this to be one piece. So to do that, we're just going to bring this up. And I'm going to show you, we do need to zoom in, and I'm going to show you why. It looks really good when I'm zoomed out, but when I zoom in, you can see, and I'll zoom in even further just so you can see in the video, see all these little fragments, and we don't want those. So we need to adjust until those go away, but we don't get any little holes like this one in our image. Now with this one, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that. So that's not a problem either. We can do it so that we get the best outer edge we can with as few fragments inside as possible. That looks pretty good. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to click on trace. If I click trace outer edge or trace and detach, I won't get this inner piece and I want this inner piece as well. Um, all I'll get is a cut line on the outside. So I want to click the top trace one. And that's what I've got. And now I'm just going to click on my cut line and my photo, which you can click anywhere outside to get your photo because it's much, much bigger. See? You can see that I have my two bounding boxes here. I'm going to go to Object. I'm going to go to Modify. And I'm going to go to Crop. And now you can see what it's done is when I click on my photo and move it away here. I don't have this huge bounding box around my picture. The reason why that's important, I still have my cut lines, but the reason that that's important is if I still had that huge bounding box around my picture, that actually acts as a white edge. And so if I were to try and put a bunch of these on the page, I would never be able to put them this close together because I'd have this white box that would overlap the one next to it and you wouldn't see this one because it sees a white background around this and it wants to print that as well. Even though your printer doesn't print white, it overlaps on top of this one or this one would overlap on top of this one, whichever one's on top. So you wouldn't be able to put them very close together, but by removing that I can put these right next to each other without a problem. Okay. Now I still haven't dealt with these little fragments and if I zoom right in you'll be able to see they're still there. 
Okay, see those little red dots? Those are my little fragments. So, I want to get out of my cut window. Whoops. And what I want to do is I want to click this. I'm going to release compound path. And then I'm going to do this until I get all those little fragments. Remember that when you select, depending on what you have in your settings, I have mine set so my, my box has to be drawn all the way around the outside of whatever I'm trying to select. So it won't select this outer outline unless I go all the way over it. Same with this inner one. So I can do a fairly large select and as long as I don't come down over here with my box, I won't get that inner one. And I can just select all that and delete. And now I don't have those fragments. I'm going to control A to select all again. Oh, and look, I've got some more fragments over here. So I'm going to zoom out so I can see them all. Um, this is one of the reasons that I actually really like the leaving on the option to have bounding boxes around each individual thing. Because um, you do have that option in Silhouette Studio to... Now see, if I drag over here, you'll see that my inner piece up there is selecting when I drag over. So I need to not do that deleting these. Um, if you have it selected so that only one bounding box occurs when you drag over things, even though this middle piece is selected, it would only draw one outer bounding box. But by having my settings so that it leaves bounding boxes for each thing selected, I can see that there's one, two boxes selected and that's it. So easy way to do that. Now that I have all my fragments out, I can make compound path again and now when I move this around the cut line stays with it I can go into my cut lines and you can see it's gonna cut here and around the outer edge alright I hope that's helpful and see you next time bye